So welcome to this presentation and thank you for coming. And thanks for the ABU to hosting us. Uh, I will talk about uh, how you want to develop a REST interface for the repository interface in films. So let me uh, have a brief introduction about us. Who we are, we are Microsimage. We are an animation studio, VFX uh, post-production, and we have a digital laboratory, which is the part that the main interest in, uh, in films. Uh, we are located in uh, mainly in France, and we have facilities in Belgium and uh, Montreal. Uh, we were recently acquired by Technicolor. Hopefully, it will help to develop the films adoption. So, when it comes to developing, uh, you have basically three steps. First step is documentation. Then we will see what technology we have to use in production and uh, during development, development, sorry, and the methodology, how we really develop. So, there are two pieces of very important documentation themes. First one is a generated, auto-degenerated documentation in HTML, which is very helpful. And second one is a film's technical specification in PDF uh, that are edited by UBO. We will then switch to the specifications. This is something that uh, you will be able to download. The, hopefully, there will be a link with the video. Uh, we will uh, we will do what whatever it takes to do so. So it's basic specifications, as you may see, with contents and uh, so on. And it contains uh, the data model for films. So this is a reference that you will need to consult. Another piece of documentation is uh, the. The HTML documentation, where you have all the services you may use in repositories that are listed and described, and the contracts you have to respect in REST uh, to call them. I will come back to them later when we we'll talk about methodology. So, coming back to the presentation, these two pieces of uh, documentation are very important since they will be your, uh, really your guideline during the development. Um, we will now talk about the architecture and the technology we need. First, you have media, so if you want a media storage, that's the base. Then you have data to persist, so you put them on a database. Since we are doing uh, a web application, well, you need a web server. In themes, as you know, uh, there is an orchestrator, uh, sorry, an orchestrator to operate your workflows, so to dialogue with this orchestrator, uh, you need to speak in either XML or JSON, so you need ObjuC, a builder, a parser, and a validator. And since there are also in synchronous uh, operation, you will need a REST client to talk back to the orchestrator. So this is what you will end up in production, but during development, you don't really want to start with an, an orchestrator, so we emulate the orchestrator with a server and a client, so that you can validate only your exchanges before you validate your own workflows. Uh, for the record, here are the technologies that we do use, but they are not by any means monetary. You can use any technology you want, but this is what we, what we did use. So, methodology. Once uh, what is sorry, there is all that we will cover. First, we'll talk about how really we do it. Then we will see a typical XML payload. We'll show XML for uh, this presentation, but it can be done in JSON whatsoever, without without problem. Then we will see some simple resources to be implemented, and we will see. Uh, how to apply this methodology and we will go through some important concepts uh, for REST interface to see like credentials, a record, 
uh, version in compatibility and we will get back to how to transfer GSML, JSON to XML and the opposite. So let's start it. So the first thing, um, uh, the film repository is uh, very complete and you may not need to implement all of it. Uh, for instance, there is uh, the possibility to lock essences, that's something some people want to address, some people don't want to address. So the first thing is you have to define a subset of operations that you really need and then find what this subset, um, what is the correspondence uh, into the repository resources. Once you, once you have that, you, can, you have a list of operations that you will implement, then for each, each operation, you will implement them one by one and test them, test them sorry, one by one. So this is a typical XML period. It's very technical. We don't need to go into full detail of it. Just, it's just there so that you know what it should like. You have the XML namespace uh, and some ideas. Yeah. No, we will. There is the three resources that uh, we will come to. The first one is very simple. We will add a content. Then once we, we have added content, we will get a content, and we will see uh, a more a bit more complicated uh, operation at the end to add an essence, which is a uh, content is basically only the editorial data, and essence is the uh, whole file, which is big, a bit better as you will see. So let's see how we will perform add content. So I will uh, switch to the documentation. Sorry, it's there. And <coughs> sorry, and I will look for the add content. It's there. So I have a description of add content, and I have a description of what is in the input and the output. I will go to the input message to see. What, what I need, I need an object called add content request. I can go to, through the documentation to see uh, this request. Since this is a generated uh, code, it's made a bit of time to come, but here it is. And I see that my add content request is composed of several items, a version, which is mandatory, credential, which as you can see, is a, there is a scene line so it's not mandatory, and a content, which is mandatory, because the purpose, obviously, to add a content. So I can go into the add content and see how, ah, my, my mouse is not working, how it's composed, and I can see every object that is under the content. And if I want a more technical view, here are a sample of what I need to do exactly in my, uh, in my content. So this is how you will, uh, this is exactly how you will develop and how you will uh, know what you need to do uh, corresponding to the documentation. Now once you know that, you can do your own code and uh, you can uh, uh, use it. And once you have finished to code, you can use a tool called Postman, which is a REST client uh, to, uh, to 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 send uh, your uh, your ad content. So ad content is a post operation. So I select post. It's um, form and content URL. So sorry, it's a um, it's a raw post. So it's, it's a remaining of something old that should not be here. Sorry for that. <laughs> so I can uh, here past my uh, my XML description. Here, I enter the URI from uh, my request, and there I can uh, send the whole thing. I had a collection to, to Suru, but during the transport, something was a lot, so I'm sorry for that. But uh, you will have uh, samples uh, uh, in the documentation that you can uh, use to. So, basically, that was, that was about uh, add content. If I switch back to the presentation, we'll see that now we will inter be interested in get content. So this is the same thing. We'll go to the documentation. So I'll get, I will get back to the summary. Search for the get content operation, which is 
somewhere. We will get it. Maybe. Ah, there it is. So, what do I need to implement again content? I go and see. Sorry, I didn't tend to left click. And I see a get content request actually needs a content, eventually some filter or specific filter if you don't want all the content. And if I go to the content, I see that only the resource ID is mandatory. So I will only need to pass an XML with the uh, content and a resource ID that will allow me to get my content. So basically, you see, this is always the same uh, the same methodology we get through the list, we search, we operation, and we implement it. Now, the next one is a bit different because it's a synchronous. Uh, essences are basically uh, the media files, so media are, are big. So we don't want to block the server by sending the file and the server does, cannot do anything while the file is not processed. So this is a synchronous. We send an adjacent messages, and uh, the server uh, calls us back with an, a, an, uh, a check saying, an acknowledge saying, hey, OK, I know. You want to, to uh, send in an essence. I get it. I will call back when it's done. So we will see the notifying process in the documentation and uh, how different this is. So if I look for the adjacent, which is somewhere too. We will find it. OK. You see that in the response, I don't have a response message like other uh, documentation, but I have an acknowledge method, which is, uh, as I said, uh, is the acknowledge from server that it will be done. In the essence request, you will see a slight difference. We have a part which is notify at. And this is where we will, ha we will explain to the server when we will get a uh, response when it succeeds, or if it fails, where to send the response. And this is basically a very simple thing. Sorry, the, the click doesn't work. So it's a very simple uh, object. It will load. So it's just basically an array. So you can, uh, you can have any kind of uh, way to, uh, to answer it, uh, even a file in a watch folder if that suits you. So it's, uh, really, um, it's really easy to have uh, this notification back. But it's very important because without the notification, you'll never know when your uh, file is uh, being processed. So this is, this is the only difference between synchronous and asynchronous part. And now you, are, you have seen how to do it. We'll get into the little more details in the rest that are interested in the rest protocol. So credentials. Uh, there is a credential uh, tag in the XML, as you may have seen, but they are used by the sub part of things. Since we are in REST, we do not use these credentials. In REST, uh, we use the headers. So you have to put a uh, credential into the readers. Uh, you are totally free to use any kind of authentication. The only thing that states uh, the specification is that you have to use this, uh, this um, character, xfims username with uh, xfims person or xfims session token in the reader. But Beyond that, you, you may want to have a basic authentication digest, something more complicated with certificates, whatever. You are totally free. Just you have to pass into the headers to be interoperable. Then we'll see about the error codes. In, um, in FIMS, any error code uh, generates a fault message. So there is no uh, standard uh, 404 page stating that uh, nothing was food. There is a 404 message stating that nothing was food. Because FIMS is meant to be used by workflows, so we cannot send them HTML pages. We send them messages. Um, so 
each fold corresponds to a repository fold, since this is a repository interface. And for instance, if I had an invalid resource on a 104 HTTP code, it corresponds to the DATS00012 uh, fold code. Uh, if you need more information, all the false codes are described in the HTML documentation. It just, once you have defined your first error code, all the other codes are really easy to define. And then we have uh, a topic about versioning and compatibility. As you know, the FIMS framework is moving. We are now, uh, at the moment, we're coding at uh, FIMS 1.1. Uh, FIMS 1.2 is about. Uh, to uh, to be out and maybe when you watch this video there will be films on that tree so we have to manage uh, a version uh, and compatibility so in a rest api you have to set the version into the header so that when the server receives uh, a request he knows which version to address it and to support uh, interoperability with soap you have also to set uh, your, um, your version number into the XML. But this is only for interoperability, you do not use it in REST. And if you, are, if you want to support several versions into your server, you have to set one endpoint for one version. That's really basic stuff. And then the last part, we, all that we see was XML, but you can do it in JSON, you're not born to XML. There is just one rule to, uh, to respect. Uh, it's uh, that um, each XML document corresponds to only one JSON document, and the opposite is true. So it's just a matter of convention, uh, of conversion. As you can see, here is the, uh, the tag BMS code with a value, and we just switch, transform it in a property BMS code with the same value. Same thing for attributes. We have a namespace definition here. We transform it with an error base uh, so that um, uh, this, the XML parser can know it's an attribute if there is a conversion to make. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.